In the United States, there is only ever one canyon that people seem to talk about, the Grand Canyon. If you live here, you've at least heard of it, and I'm willing to bet even most of my viewers from outside the US are familiar as well. With annual visitations rising to over 6 million in recent years, along with making it so far as to be considered an official natural wonder of the world, I don't think it's a stretch to say this very well may be the most popular canyon on Earth. Naturally, I assumed this popularity carried over into meaning it was also the world's biggest. After all, it is called the Grand Canyon, right? And just like you, I never needed to know for sure what the biggest canyon was because, well, that's something that just doesn't matter all that much. That is, of course, unless you're making an intro to areography video like this one and at some point in that video need to compare a canyon on Earth to the Great Valley's Marineris of Mars. If you haven't seen that video, the long story short is that even the biggest canyon on Earth would be dwarfed by this Martian feature. But therein lies the problem. What is the biggest canyon on Earth? First off, no matter how you look at it, the Grand Canyon is a big canyon. There's no argument here. But what exactly does big even mean in this context? I mean, after all, canyons are three-dimensional features, meaning they can be measured in not one or two, but three basic ways. Running 446 kilometers long, 1857 meters deep, and 29 kilometers wide, the Grand Canyon gives us a sizable baseline to judge all other canyons against. That being said, depending on what you're looking for, this isn't even the biggest canyon in the Americas, with both the Colca and Cotahuasi canyons in the Peruvian Andes extending down over 3,000 meters, or nearly twice as deep as ours in Arizona. Despite not running for very long and coming off fairly minor rivers, what gives these canyons their great depth is the fact that they are nestled within the Andes Mountains, the second highest mountain range on the planet. Okay, well, if that's the case, then shouldn't we be looking at the first highest mountain range on the planet? Well, I'm glad you asked. The Himalayas naturally feature a number of astoundingly deep canyons. The Kaligandanki is, yes, another exceedingly deep canyon, and heck, on the Wikipedia page, it even claims to be, in fact, what we're looking for. Wedged between Annapurna, the 10th tallest mountain on Earth, and Dalagiri, the 7th tallest mountain on Earth, the canyon reaches down 5,500 meters between these two peaks, making this claim awfully tempting to believe. But if you got tired of me drawing out this answer and have just decided to look things up on your own, you've probably found this canyon along the Yarlung Sangpo River. So yeah, good job, you beat me to the punch or whatever. Literally called the Yarlung Sangpo Grand Canyon, what's so grand about this canyon is that not only does it run for over 500 kilometers, but this part here, between the mountains of Namchabarwa and Gyalaperi, reaches all the way down to a purported 6,000 meters deep, a greater depth than any other canyon on Earth making the Yarlung Grand Canyon a full 60 kilometers longer and over three times deeper than the Colorado Grand Canyon. That's why most sites on the internet will tell you this is in fact the biggest on Earth. But if you're like me and spent one month of your life making a video about what would happen if we melted all the ice off Greenland, then you'd remember learning about a recently discovered mega canyon entirely hidden beneath miles of ice. Looking at just the bedrock of the island, we'll find an ancient canyon making its way 750 kilometers across the bottom of the landmass, making it, yes, the longest canyon on Earth. As a result, this canyon has also been named the Grand Canyon, parentheses, Greenland. But okay, I get it, it's still pretty unsatisfying to say the biggest canyon on Earth is hidden, never to be seen under miles of ice. So it was at this point that I had to ask myself, what about the ocean? Oh, what horrors lie in the ocean. As it turns out, a continental shelf meeting oceanic crust creates a huge potential for more dense water to move down against. These dense water currents can come in the form of sediment-laden river water or can even be caused by sharp temperature or salinity gradients generating flow in the water column. No matter how they form though, over time these underwater currents can carve out canyon after canyon after canyon against any landmass. 
While these submarine canyons are shockingly extensive across the ocean floor, only a few of them reach beyond the narrow shelf boundary to become anything extraordinary. A perfect example of this can be seen off the coast of Congo. Already the deepest river in the world, the Congo Canyon begins even before the river reaches the ocean. Here, sediment-rich waters coming from the river have cut a clear path down through the sea floor, all the way across the shelf. Unfortunately, Africa's continental shelf doesn't last too long here, making the Congo Canyon a distinct but rather short-lived feature overall. Looking for a longer example, I was brought actually not too far away from where I live, in New York, where the Hudson River ends up carving a 1.2 kilometer deep canyon along its way to the Atlantic. This journey ends up taking 640 kilometers from just outside the New York Harbor all the way to the Hudson Fan, a structure that signifies where the sediment finally empties and settles onto the surface. At this length, the Hudson qualifies as the longest canyon I could find not entirely covered by ice. Meanwhile, this stretch of coast off the eastern United States features some of the most developed submarine canyon systems anywhere in the world. I highly suggest you take a look if you're into this sort of thing. But okay, so we've established the deepest and the longest canyons, exposed or otherwise, leaving us with one last criteria to search for. And I saved width for last because, well, this is sort of where the very definition of a canyon starts to fall apart. Not too far from the Hudson Canyon, we'll find the Bahamas, by far one of the most confusing features on the planet to look at. But hopefully this will help make some sense out of it all. What you're really looking at here is a large but flat landmass, essentially one big hill, that for the most part sits just below sea level. The plateau's shallowness allows the sunlight penetrating the water to reach its bright carbonate sands, which is what you're seeing here. Only the tallest banks break over the ocean to become the scattered islands and atolls of the Bahamas. During the Ice Age, however, the buildup of polar ice caused sea levels to drop by as much as 130 meters lower than modern sea levels. This would have been enough to expose much more of the Bahaman Plateau, adding a whole new island cluster to the Atlantic Ocean. Even during times like these, however, the landmass was still bisected by this distinct darkened trail cutting through the otherwise shallow bank. This is the Great Bahama Canyon, not only reaching as deep as 4,000 meters, but at its widest spanning 50 kilometers between the greater and lesser Bahama banks. However, not too far away from the Bahamas, and actually even closer to the Hudson Canyon, we'll find a path cut out of the shelf by glaciers, leading all the way up to the St. Lawrence River. While technically called the Laurentian Channel, this long eroded trail starts to blur the line between canyon and other simple grooves on the surface like channels, gaps, straits, fjords, you know, all those words. This channel is twice the width of the Bahama Canyon, making it definitely noteworthy, but whether or not that makes it a true canyon is really up to you. So are either the Bahama or Laurentian Canyons the widest on Earth? Well, as it turns out, length, depth, and width are all the dimensions needed to come up with area and volume, which means we actually have two additional ways to define canyons by. Which is why at last my search for an answer to what I thought was a simple question has led me all the way to the Bering Sea. So buckle up. I think I'll spare us all a little time by skipping the Navarin Canyon, but you should just know that this canyon is second overall, both in terms of area and volume. Area, being a two-dimensional characteristic, however, is determined only by length and width. What this means is that a canyon doesn't need to be very deep at all to still potentially have a very big area. That's what we can see happening with the 495 kilometer long Bering Canyon. Given a width of 65 kilometers at parts, the canyon covers a total area of over 30,000 square kilometers, or roughly the size of Belgium, earning the title of the canyon with the greatest surface area. A look at the Bering Canyon's cross section, however, compared to, let's say, the nearby Navarin, reveals the shortcomings of this metric. 
But like I said, Navarin is the second largest by area and volume, which means even this isn't the end. Reaching deeper than any of the other Bering Shelf canyons and wider than any other canyon yet to be discovered is the mighty Zemchug Canyon. With depths reaching nearly 3,000 kilometers down and a span of approximately 100 kilometers, Zemchug features the greatest cross-sectional area of any canyon on Earth. This means it also earns the title of the most voluminous canyon in the world, although the ocean doesn't seem to be having any problems filling it. And so I was finally at the end of my search for the best canyon to compare against Mariner Valley of Mars. Well, actually, no, all I knew was the longest, deepest, widest, etc. canyons, and the choice was still mine as to which one to use. But I'll be honest, I still don't know which of these would be best for a comparison. In all regards, Mariner Valley is five times longer than the Earth's longest canyon, a full kilometer deeper than our deepest, and over twice as wide. But perhaps the most impressive comparison comes by measuring volumes, where Zemchug's 5,800 cubic kilometers represents less than 1 800th of Mariner Valley's incredible 4.9 million cubic kilometers of space. But I don't know, comparing the biggest canyon system in our solar system to just some random big hole in the ocean doesn't carry as much weight to me as comparing it to something I've known about my whole life and actually, you know, have seen myself. Sure, the Yarlung Sengpo Grand Canyon is deeper, the Greenland Grand Canyon is longer, and the Bering Canyons are bigger, but at the end of the day, it didn't matter what I used as an example, so long as the people watching understood what I was saying. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. This is really one of those topics where the more you look, the more you'll find. So if you enjoyed this, definitely get on Google Earth and do some exploring of your own. If you guys think I should do the same type of exploration for other features of the Earth, let me know in the comments what you'd like to see. And of course, if you want to continue seeing videos like this, you can head over to my Patreon to help support what I do here. Thanks!